next we've got uh twister uh nice gentleman that we've um mm. had the pleasure of talking to on the uh, in the in the green room so to speak the electronic green room a few times um and and i have to say as well um he's been a really big help for us as organizers um because he was one of the first people that we did the tests for getting the calls through and what he did was he actually went and he wrote a whole, whole section to help the other instructors um, get ahead and uh, connect with the software that we use and before um, before we even spoke to them so we just want to say a big big thank you to Glenn for helping with that so we didn't ask him to he just went and did it on his own back he's just that kind of guy so uh we have this gentleman here glenn lavalley and um what we can do is i think we should bring him on the screen so I please should. please welcome a huge q corner welcome to q corner convention 2020 to glenn lavalley hello is. can you hear us can we hear you welcome glenn can you hear us? Let me Hello. just check. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Uh, we're really good. How are you? Um, I cannot hear you. Right. Okay. Well, we'll can you hear me? Out. Yes, we can definitely no, hear I you. I cannot. Can you? I can. Oh. oh, there you go. Now I heard that. You heard that, did you? Do, do, do. One second. Did you hear us now? Okay, let's try that again. There we go. So Glenn. You can hey. hear me? Yeah, I can yeah, hear you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. yes. So your audio is not coming through to me. Right. Right. Okay. Let's have, right. I know how we can I reroute know. that. How about now, Glenn? Oh, yeah. Now there we go. Coming in loud and clear. There we We're go. We're there. There's that Perfect. many people lined up. Whoosh. Thanks, Glenn. We were just given a, fa a fantastic welcome. Saying just, the uh, how much of a, um, a really big help you were for writing that guide on how to connect to help with the other instructors to co connect in with us. So we, we never ask you to, you just did that on your own back and we really appreciate your support. Forever learning, forever sharing. Okay. So um, what we're going to do is we don't want to take up any of your time. He's got a ton of stuff that he wants to go through. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive back uh, into the back screen and we're going to leave you with Glenn. So Enjoy, please. Enjoy folks. Give him some big love, everybody on Q Corner, and uh, we shall see you in about an hour and a half. Perfect. Hi, my name's Glenn Labally, uh, Glenn the Bloom Guy, and uh, I've been a professional twister. Who oh, started uh, twisting when I was uh, 1996, trying to entertain my uh, family and my uh, my daughter. And I discovered I really liked to twist, and like most uh, most uh, twisters, I found a book and just started to self-teach and just got really into it and learned that I really liked to do balloons. Wasn't very good at it when I started, and over time, I just kept getting better. And I was just li listening to Jackie uh, Ochitwa on the session ahead of me, and I had a really similar experience. My first convention was uh, Twist and Shout 2010, and, you know, before that, I didn't really know the balloon community and how many people were out there. And I uh, learned about Qualitex, and I learned about uh, so many things and met so many amazing balloon artists that it inspired me to, to do more. So uh, I just became quite interested in it and developed my skills and uh, took my CBA in 2016 at the World Balloon Convention. And, wow, that was a serious eye-opener. So... Uh, there's so many uh, talented people, and I got into decor at that time and learned that uh, decor for me is another branch and creative avenue for me to follow. And I use decor. Uh, it actually makes me uh, more money uh, than uh, moving into doing more decor versus twisting. But what I find works really well for me personally is when I mix decor and twisting together, come up with unique solutions that you don't see around in my uh, my neck of the woods very much. So uh, to that end, I just wanted to uh, show you some concepts that I've come up with. And one of them was a uh, makeup, uh, I did a makeup counter 
for a uh, cosmetic department and uh, they needed something unusual and I thought hey you know why not do some some unusual makeup and this is what we came up with and uh, this is what we're going to be teaching today we're going to be doing uh, this concept here which will be your compact and it's a mixture of foils and latex balloons as well as a uh, makeup uh, lipstick <laughs> which will do will introduce you to a box twist for some of you folks that are uh, new to twisting and uh, I think we'll have time I'm going to work on uh, this is a perfume bottle and there's a couple of versions of it so we'll probably do this one here with the latex balloon but you can see you can also do it with a, a foil balloon so um, I want to just jump right in and I know there's lots of things to talk about so as I think of them I'll mention them to you uh, first of all, we're going to start, I did publish a list of some of the items that we have available. Uh, and we're going to start with, uh, let's start with the, the lipstick. I think that's kind of a fun one. So for your lipstick, you're going to start with a, uh, a 646. And I'm using a Wildberry 646 because, you know, there's red and there's pink, but I like Wildberry. And what you're going to do with the Wildberry balloon is you're going to uh, reverse inflate it. So you're going to inflate it at the the way you can do that, there's a number of ways. Uh, I'm just going to stretch it out so that way the balloon is more relaxed on the tip. And then I have a floor pump here just to show you what it looks like. This is a, uh, a special pump I had made. It's a, an aircraft pump. I don't think you can get these anymore, but I just like the way it works for me. I've been using it for easily 10 years. And what's cool about this is I can just take this balloon I just shove it all the way here. You can do this with a hand pump. Uh, you can also do this with a, a mechanical inflator or an electric inflator if you like. But uh, I like to get the air or the balloon squished down to the end as much as I can. Kind of just hold it there. And as I pump, I cause a pinch here that inflates that 646. So it comes in nicely at the end and it fills up evenly. And I just relax it as I go. Now, this is going to be the internal structure of your, of your lipstick. I'm just hold it to the side so you can kind of see for size. And uh, that's about right. So that's uh, close to two feet long. I see. So that's, what, uh, two-thirds of a meter for you metric folks. I'm actually Canadian, so I'm supposed to speak in metric. But I also know the uh, traditional English uh, uh, rule, so I'm kind of bilingual that way. But that's all I am bilingual. And we're just going to tie that. You want it nice and stiff. So you want that to be pretty firm. All right. That's going to be the start of your makeup. Now, what we're going to do next is you're going to make a box weave. And I'll show you this part here. I did it in black, which is the uh, part that's going to slide inside here. But now, for those that don't know how to do this, I'm going to use colored balloons and I'm going to make it so it's easier to follow because if it was all in black, it's kind of hard to see. So to that end, uh, grab yourself a black 260. I'm gonna grab uh, a blue one as an example. And you're going to inflate it. You're not gonna use all of it. So you're gonna leave about, uh, in this case, I got about six fingers. Again, you're not going to use all of it. Let me know if you're going too slow. I don't see any chat on my screen, so I'm not sure what the feedback is. So uh, if you have any feedback, somehow magically chat might appear or Dom or Keith will let me know. I have a theory about those guys, actually. I think there's actually two of each of them and the other side are sleeping right now while the fresh Dom and Keith are on screen. Just a theory. I have no way to prove it, but uh, it makes sense when you think about it. So we're going to make a one inch bubble. And then we're just going to pinch twist that, like so. And yeah, I love my aircraft too. It's, it's an awesome. Uh, Richard is a great, uh, great guy to make it. Now we're going to make a bubble that's going to be about a hand's width. My hands are actually pretty thick and chunky. But what you want to do is you want to make it so it's about the width of this 646. And that's why you inflate the 646 first because you, it gives you a sort of a measurement. And you want it to, in this case, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, like so. And that comes up to be 
when you're measuring, the one thing you have all the time is your hands. So that's a twister trick. I'm sure you, the core folks also do it. I guess we're all the same, so I shouldn't say one or the other. And I'm going to, in this case, grab my hand and my thumb like so, see, like this. And I know that every time I feel the balloon and it's going to feel like that, I know I have the right length. So that's sort of a, a, an in-your-head measurement. We're going to make another bubble. We're going to make another one-inch bubble, I should say. We're going to pinch twist that off. And we're going to make actually a total of four of these. We're going to make a box. I'm going to measure again another bubble. It's going to be the same length as the first. And you can just hold them side by side just to see if they're same length. You're going to make another bubble. You're going to pinch twist that one. All right, give it a squeeze. Again, I'm measuring to see if it's the same length as the first. There's your third one inch bubble that turns into a third pinch twist, like so. And you're going to make your final bubble. It should be the same length as the last one. You want to get it consistent so you have a square wrap it around awesome you should have this we don't need the rest of this balloon so i'm just going to cut it now i have a, a, a ribbon cutter on my belt here can't really see it well i guess you can't so when i just use that to cut my balloons i also use a pair of scissors children's scissors i keep them on a 260 which looks really strange when you forget to take them off and you go to the store and people wonder why you you brought your own scissors to Safeway. All right, you should have a little square. We're gonna just test this to make sure it actually fits nicely into the 646. And you should have something that looks like that. It shouldn't be too tight. It should fit nicely on there. Okay, if it's too small then you just have to do it again. If it's too big, then it tends to loosen up. You can kind of tighten it as you go, but that's what you want to shoot for. Now, you're going to take four more uh, black 260s, and you're going to inflate them. So they have, again, about uh, that much on the end. So that's about uh, four and a half, five inch tail. Okay, you use most of these. So you're going to need a total of four black 260s. Again, I'm using color just to make it easier to watch. <laughs> Thank you, Phileas. What a nice guy. I watched your show, Phileas. It was awesome. Very inspirational, you know. I learned so much working with Phileas. Uh, we've done some projects together, and uh, he's just so funny, man. It's uh, You just sit in the corner and listen to him talk, and it just makes me laugh. Okay, so there's another one. I got four of these to do. Uh, let's choose Wildberry. Why not, eh? There you go. And there's a, again, it's a four and a half, five fingers. Okay, so now you should have an armful of balloons or wherever you chose to stick them. And we're just going to wrap the knot into the each one of those twists, those pinch twists. One, two. There. And we'll do one more for fun. Actually, I got to do two more for fun. How do you get an airline pump? You know, I wish, uh, I don't believe Richard who makes them, makes them anymore. No, it's uh, really unfortunate because they are, I just love these pumps. But I believe the Mac pump uh, is a very similar, as a matter of fact, I have one of those as well. And what I like about this pump, and the Mac pump is the same concept, is it's got a T. So when I'm pushing down, uh, it doesn't put any pressure on my hands. And when I use some of the other styles of pumps, I find that uh, it uh, tires my hand out to hold them. So uh, for example, these kind of pumps, if I do a lot of work, just the repetition of holding the pump and in my fingers, it just gets to me after a while. So this way I can push down. Um, and again, uh, Mac Pumps, I believe, makes a version of this that you can get. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. So you should have what looks like a really long table. We're going to now make a, start our box twist. 
And what you're going to do is you're going to make a bubble. And typically these are about a third of the width of the, the uh, balloon thickness that you're starting with. So a 260, that's supposed to be about two inches thick. This is about a three quarter inch bubble. Okay, if it's too thick, or this bubble is too wide, then what happens is there's gaps in your weave. If it's too small, then it kind of tends to deform the wall of your weave. So it's a bit of a practice to get it just right. You're going to then, so you've made a three quarter inch bubble. You're gonna make another bubble that's the same length as the one beneath it. Okay, so then you get an even weave. And again, if you are using your hand as a guide, then that's, you'll feel it the right size based on the last balloon bubble you made. Okay, I'm just gonna hold that to see how I'm holding that on my arm so it doesn't come apart. I'm going to make another three quarter inch bubble on the next 260. I'm gonna bring it across and I'm just gonna wrap those two together. Okay, now I'm going to use the one I just created, that three quarter inch bubble, I'm gonna continue on with it. So I'm actually alternating which bubble I use, which 260 I use. If this was black, it wouldn't really matter because it all looks the same. However, you wanna make sure you use up your balloons the same rate, because if you get to the end and one's really long and either are short, then you have to break and tie it in and it's less fun. There's another three quarter inch bubble. I'm going to bring that across. I'm going to twist them together like so. And again, rinse and repeat. So I'm going to make another bubble the same length as the first. Okay. And make another three quarter inch bubble. This time again on the green, which is the next vertical. I wrap these two together. Okay, and again, I'm gonna continue with the last 260 vertical I used. Make another bubble the same length as the one before. Now here's the tricky part to this whole uh, box twist. I have to wrap these two together somehow and make it easy to do. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take the two twists from the vertical and horizontal. I'm just gonna lock them together like that. And I'm gonna pinch it with my finger so it doesn't unravel. Then I'm gonna take this vertical balloon and I'm gonna slide it through what the pair of uh, lengthwise bubbles. Just wrap it in there like that. And now I have completed that row. So with that in mind, we're actually gonna do this another um, series of times and we're gonna end up with six rows. Okay, and it's really exactly doing the same thing six times. Okay, so that's the essence of weaving is just repetition. So again, I make a three quarter inch bubble, one the same length as the other, the row above it, another three quarter inch bubble, twist them together, and on it goes. Okay, same length as the other one, horizontal three quarter inch. This just seems really repetitious it's because it's really repetitious. Sorry, I don't know how to make that less uh, repetitious because you got to do it six times, but it's snowing right now in Edmonton. I'm less happy about that. I hear that uh, other parts of the world have warm weather. I was talking with Billy Damon the other day and I think he was saying it was like 96 where he lives. Well, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Love these designs. Perfect. So it's not 96 where I live. I wish it were. If I could swap for, you know, the week, that would be awesome. Okay, so here's that transition again we were speaking of. I'm going to bring it across, right? Twist to twist. Pinch so I, the, the uh, bubble doesn't come unraveled. And just slide it through. Bring it out. And there's your lock. All right. So I'm just going to continue this again. When um, we get further into the segment, I'm going to show you how you can actually up or down scale these balloons sculptures so you can make them larger or smaller for different applications. And I think uh, I sent a picture in Dom and Keith about 
an arch I made using this technique. If there's a way we can cut to that. So um, it allows you to put more elements into it. And it made it for a really pretty presentation. Okay. Here's my fourth row. I'm going to finish it again. Connect those two twisted bits together, pinch it so it doesn't come apart, and just slide it through. All right. All right. So I, I use, I like Qualitex balloons, and I'll tell you why. They're consistent for me. All right, I pick up a bag of them and I, they just feel right to my hands. I've been using them since I started twisting and they just feel right to me. So I find that uh, the foils too are pretty consistent. Like I've had good luck with the foils as well. And I tend to, in my work, when I'm making up stuff, I really beat on my balloons. Like I'm really hard on them and I try different crazy things that other people may or may not do. And uh, <laughs> I need stuff that's not going to fail me. And I've had really good luck with Qualitex. So thank you for making a good product, guys. All right, there's the fifth one. Do my pinch across. Roll it through. All right. And we're going to do one more of these for fun. All right, but make sure I'm going to keep following the same thing. Now, you've probably figured out that you can do a lot of different things with this particular weave. Make sure I'm on camera. Is that better? There we go. Drifting off camera. So if you wanted to make a basket of flowers, for example, you could have made a five um, horizontal or five bubble uh, pentagon to start with, or even six. And that would give you more of a, uh, a circular form that you could build. You can also change the size of these bubbles to make them bigger or smaller, which will increase or decrease the flare of your twists. Okay, We're doing it all the same in this case because the lipstick model that I'm making is all the same for the base. Right? But again, this is actually a really powerful technique. Uh, for those that do twisting, we do a lot of this or make sculptures using twisted pieces. This is a very common way to do it. Okay, there's my last one. Again, I take those two twisted bits, and I lock the long bubble and the short one together, and now I have this. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you can give them a little roll, like so, make sure they're all nicely balanced together. There. Everybody still hear me okay? Is this, we're okay? I, I can only hear myself talking, so <laughs> hopefully it's uh, going to work. Oh, thanks, Corey. Corey helped me practice. She was very patient and tolerant. <laughs> uh, a very good student. I recommend having Corey in your audience. We're going to make a one inch bubble. We're going to pinch twist it. Okay. And we're going to go and do that all the way around for all four corners. I actually ran through this a few times, actually, practicing and uh, did some remote testing. Made sure that my content was going to work. This is the first time I've taught these, so it's um, I'm thank you for joining me and uh, finding out about it. <laughs> I've gone and done all four pinch twists, and I'm going to cut these extra bits because I don't need them anymore. I just discard the remnants, and I'm going to tie them, wrap it around so it doesn't get unraveled. Two. All right. Oh, I got a timer going. I better crank it up here. There's three and one more. And four. Perfect. Okay, so now you have a box. Oh, yeah, Mary Kay Cosmetics Business. That's awesome. What a great idea. Okay. Now, I'm going to magically make this become a black one. 
Right. And now you have a black box that you're going to now have available for your makeup. Put that aside. Now you're going to grab yourself a silver, chrome silver in my case, 260, and you're going to inflate it uh, to about, oh, I think I've got about four fingers on here. Tie it off. Okay, so we're going to make this part now. Okay, and this has got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six loops. If you want to do yours five, do it four. Uh, I just thought this was about the right amount when I looked at makeup advertisements on Google. Very scientific. I'm going to wrap it around the 646, and I want to decide about, this is a good time to decide how much you want on the top showing up of your makeup uh, lipstick. So that's about right for me. Now, the trick with this is you want to figure out where a nice tight circle is going to be around your 646. And what I did is I made a one inch bubble. I'm pulling that with my thumb and I pull the other one around and I kind of eyeballing it and feeling how tight it is. So then I know how long to make this circular loop. So then I can put those two twists together like so and just lock them in. Okay. All right, now you want this to be it doesn't have to be super duper tight because then it'll squish on your 646, but it's got to be firm enough that it's not going to move anywhere. Otherwise, what happens is that these rings will separate and that doesn't look as nice. So you should have this. Okay. I'm going to pinch twist that later, but for now, make, make about a three quarter inch bubble. Now make a three quarter inch second bubble and you're going to pinch twist the second bubble. Like so. Oh. Hoopla. Okay, so that happens. You just grab its brother and you do it again. That's, that's why you don't want it too tight. Mine was a bit tight. That's okay. Lock it. One inch bubble, quarter inch or three quarter inch, I should say, another three quarter inch bubble. And then you want that just to loop around like so. Okay. So I just happen to have just enough air to be able to just switch that in and just lock it in place. If you have extra, then that's fine. Just you can cut that off. But that's what you want to do. You want to make what looks like this. Okay, so I'm gonna grab another 260. This time I'm going to fill it and I want it just a little more. I didn't have quite enough air at the end. A little bit of a burp. I've got about um, three fingers there. Tie it on. Now I wanted to have a second pinch twist here and I ran out of air in the last one. So I'm just going to fake it by putting a little three quarter inch bubble. I'm going to lock that in like so. I'm just going to make a little pinch twist here. And we're just going to carry on this, this whole series. Three quarter inch bubble. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Make yourself your another three quarter inch bubble like so. Okay. And I am going to hold the balloon under my arm as I wrap this around. Nice and snug. Give it a squeeze so it's a bit soft. And I want to line up where my next twist is going to be. So I have a line going down like so. I just twist it together like this. Okay. You should have three now of these bubbles. It's a repetitious thing again. Three quarter inch bubble. Another three quarter inch pinch twist and on you go. Okay. So what you noticed here is I actually started on the wrong side. So I'm actually going in the wrong direction here. And I should be going down this side where the, uh, <laughs> where the knot is. If that happens to you because you panicked because one of your balloons broke on camera, what you can do, you can just slide this off. And you can slide it back on again. As you squeeze it between your knees. 
in a very professional looking way, off camera. There. There we go. There. That's what I wanted to do. So we're back to business, boys. We're going to go around again. Follow where that's going to be a nice tight end. And I'm going to make a little bubble here. I just happen to have enough air. I could finish that. Do a twist. And there's my fourth one. Do that one more time. How's everybody doing? Everybody still following? Everybody still awake? Okay. Both three fingers. Tie it off. On we go. Okay. This part, this uh, back part, thank you, is going to be hidden anyway, so you don't want it to be sloppy, but, you know, it doesn't have to be um, tuning piano perfect. Three-quarter inch bubble, or a pinch twist, give it a squeeze, around it goes. And I like to make sure that I'm lining this all up as I pull this other bubble through. This helps me make sure that it's nice and consistently tight. There, I wrap that around a couple of times. All right, that's number five. I got one more to do. Three quarter inch bubble. Three quarter inch bubble into a pinch twist. Around it goes, and I have just enough balloon left that I can tie that tail in. So, just wrap that around so it doesn't come out. And you have this strange lunar hot dog, which is going to become lipstick really quickly here. Because you take this black box you made earlier and you just slide that on. All right? Pick the nicest side if you can find a side you like more than the others. And that's going to be the front, the side you like the least. I just slide it in the back. And I'm just going to line up, in my case, all these roll of pinch twists here. Just because I think that would look better. And now you have the basis of your lipstick. And what I like to do is just finish it off with another 260, in this case, chrome silver. Just to add a bit of a base to it. There we go. This is actually very easy to make. Thank you. Someone said they're loving this. I'm going to make a little bubble, one inch, or that's about a one inch silver bubble. You don't have to use silver if you wanted to do another tip. Or if there's a particular cosmetic line that you're selling to, then you would obviously want to use their color. So I'm just making a one inch bubble and I'm going to pinch twist it like so. Then I put the black on the bottom. Give it a squeeze, make the next bubble the same as the one before. So you're just going along the bottom. That's going to actually make another vertical wall. I'm going to take this bubble, which is about five and a half inches, the same size as the black one, wrap it around, and make another pinch twist. A one inch bubble into a pinch twist. Perfect. All right. Number two, bubble the same size as the black. I roll that around with a squeeze, one inch bubble, make it a pinch twist. Okay, silver on top, give it another squeeze. There's my next bubble, same as the one beneath. Wrap it around that black pinch twist. Another little bubble from uh, silver. And make that into a pinch twist as well. All right. And just finish it off with your last bubble. Whoops. I'm not came undone. That's okay. Because I'm just going to grab it. Make that, remake that bubble and wrap it around this part I just made. Turn that into a pinch twist. Awesome. And it should have something that looks like this. 
Okay, I don't need the rest of this part here. Oh, somebody made a cosmetic arch. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's a really, actually, this is a really powerful visual representation of a product that is commonly used by many people. And it's very sellable. And I want to show you something at the end uh, when we get to it that I've done to make it into the delivery piece. I'm just sliding that 646 down. And what happens is the friction of the whole thing kind of keeps it together. I do have this part here, that 646. If you want to, you can just wrap it around one of the pairs of uh, twists on the end, the pinch twist, just to keep it from going anywhere by accident. Probably it'll never move, but you now have a pair, you have a lipstick now. Woohoo! So, that's number one. I'm just going to put that aside, and we're going to dive right into the uh, compact there. Hopefully nobody had any questions. Um, I can't see any dialogue anyway other than what pops up, so if there aren't any questions, I'm going to keep going. But um, before I do that, I'm just going to show you something cute. I made a little baby one. How do I... <laughs> That's a good question. I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about that shortly. But um, you can upsize or downsize these, uh, these figures that I'm making today. And in this case, I used 160s and I used a 350, but there's an actual trick I wanna show you a little later on that. The question is, how do I plan my designs? Um, that's an awesome question. Uh, what I do is I figure out what the client wants and then I will research on the internet and whatever I can find around the house to find things that are similar that uh, I can represent and turn them into a sculpture. So I will take many photographs or I'll use pictures from the internet and I'll turn them into a, uh, a, a PNG file, I believe it is. So then I can put it onto a program I use called Visio for me. There's publishers, another one, there's lots of drawing programs. I have Visio and I'm pretty familiar with it. So that's what I use. And I will create a grid of uh, X and Y, and I know that each grid is a certain uh, thickness, right? So uh, like one inch is one foot. Then I will overlay the, uh, the images that I want to recreate. In this case, if I'm doing, uh, we'll take this uh, atomizer, for example, and I know this balloon is an 18 inch heart, and this is 18 inches, then I will size it onto the, the photograph I take of a similar atomizer, or even this heart itself, um, the, a picture of it, I'll put it onto the grid and I'll size it until I get it to fit into the right um, proportions. Then I add the other elements to help me understand how many balloons I'm going to need, how long they're gonna need, if I'm gonna have to use a 350 or 260 in order for me to realize that design. If that makes any sense. <laughs> um, I do, uh, I actually did a course on a uh, master class on costuming and covered this in detail. Uh, that was at Twist and Show. So um, that was uh, Qualitech sponsored my balloons there. So again, yay! Um, that's how I kind of come up with some of this stuff. Um, thank you um, for that. Someone likes the atomizer. Perfect. I am going to talk about this thing now. So this is a compact. I happen to have a rose 18 inch round. You're going to need that as well as a silver. 18 inch round and what what i liked about this is i came up with this idea because i acquired a bunch of foils from a company that was selling uh, selling out their inventory and i was staring at this thing and i go man i can make a mirror out of this uh, so what do i what uses mirrors and i happened to go through my wife's makeup drawer looking for something i said hey look at this i can make a mirror out of that so now we have a compact. I'm going to take an 18 inch silver. I'm going to in fully inflate it with my handy aircraft pump. When you inflate your foils, one trick I discovered is that you want to make sure that you can kind of replicate 
the temperature that you're going to be building in to be what your target location is going to be. So if this was going to be in a really hot mall, for example, like physically warm, and you have a super air conditioned house, uh, if your foils are um, tensioned or filled to the point where they're snug in your house, and you take them to a hot place, they're going to expand in the air and that could be a problem for you. So you want to be aware of that. And if you have to underinflate your foils, uh, they're, they're pretty sensitive to that. So generally where, I'm, where I live, the temperature is fairly consistent for indoors, but I know that there are places that have a lot of variability. So something to be aware of. Now you want to take an 18 inch, um, this case rose, I believe which is a lovely color for what I'm doing with this. And I'm going to inflate it fully. You know, one side of my body has got really big shoulders compared to the other. There we go. All right, now to do the compact, you're going to need, uh, you're gonna need five of these black 260s and then you're also going to need oh let's see four black 350s actually you're going to need seven black 260s but we're going to start with one of them to begin with you're not going to use all of this so inflate it to about oh that's good about that much air okay tie it off and we're going to make the hinge of the of your uh compact we're going to do that by making uh, this is about an inch and a half bubble. You want to make it a bit soft. Just pinch twist it like so. Hold that against my shirt so you can see that better. There. You're going to do that three times in total. Pinch twist. There's two. Give it a squeeze. Pinch twist. So that's three. Okay. You're going to make a bubble. That's about... In my case, four fingers, that's about four inches. And you're going to make three more pinch twists on that side. These are one and a half inch pinch twists. So, make a little dog bone kind of thing in black, onyx black. Okay, and now you're going to bring the 260 across, and you're going to make another bubble the same size as the first. And you're going to wrap that around. Now you have this. I don't need the rest of it. I'm going to keep it just in case. You never know when you're going to need a scrap. I'm going to tie off this little hinge now so it doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And you should have something that looks like this. Right? Three bubbles on either side and two... Uh, longer bubbles in the inside. Now you're going to take a 350. You're going to do this four times. So I use this little basket that I found at the dollar store. And it's just perfect for storing inflated balloons as I use them. You're going to inflate your black 350. And you want about uh, two fingers, about two inches of uninflated on the end. Okay. Give a tie, and you're going to need four of these in total. So just tie that off. That's number two coming up. Now, lots of people tie different, like tie balloons differently. What I find works for me, like one of the things I learned when I'm doing decor, my hands get tired of tying. I actually uh, learned a trick where I take the, the balloon and I got it uh, so there's a fair amount of slack on the nozzle take my hand around and I grab it, I bring it around and under, so the, the neck goes between the balloon and my two fingers. And then I just pinch it so that now the knot or the nozzle is right on there between the two. And I just pull the loop of balloon around. For me, that's a faster way to tie. It just takes less stress on my hands and you do it enough, you get fast at it. So there's number two. On we go. There we go. There's three. 
You want these fairly firm so you don't have to burp them a whole lot. And you'll see why you want them fairly firm in a moment. Okay, there we go. There's two fingers. Tie that off. All right, so you have four of these guys now, and you have your handy hinge. Okay, so you're going to take the, the knot end, and you're going to choose one side of the hinge. You're going to just wrap that hinge in there with the, the knot of that 646. I'm such a patient, clear teacher. Thanks. Uh, uh, sorry, I have a hard trouble reading that, Beth Art. But thank you. <laughs> and I'm going to now take this two six or three fifty and this tail. I'm just going to squeeze the air out of it because I don't want that extra air. It's going to go now on the opposite hinge. Wrap that around. You have this, okay? And that is going to be should be a pretty snug fit when you put that over your inflated uh, foil, okay? Okay, and you're going to do the same. I could have put a little more air in here. It's really kind of sensitive how it fits. So you might have to play with it just to get the right amount of air in your 350. Okay, I'm going to take the next one. I'm going to wrap that 350 nozzle into one side of the hinge. Wrap it around a bunch of times. Okay, and again, you're just going to do exactly the same thing. Just squeeze the air out of the tip because otherwise it gets in the way and you're going to go to the opposite side of the hinge and that's your second pair can you end up with this right kind of looks like a toilet seat actually to me now you're going to take a black 260 and you're going to use half of it so just cut that in two in two equal sizes Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. I'm, um, th I'm glad people like this. I'm going to grab the uh, 260 and the nozzle or the tip in. I'm just going to put a little snip in it. And what that does is when I tie this around the 350s, it doesn't get any air stuck in it. Right? So it keeps it nice and uh, even. Okay. And I'm going to, I have to do this off camera because. I'm not that I'm not that good at tying knots holding things up to my chest sometimes. So I use my body quite a bit as a way to leverage. But that's what you want to do. You want to just tie that into a circle and it should be halfway. And you can just slide that knot to the inside. Just just grab the balloon, uh, the 260, and pull it aside. You don't want to make it too tight. And the reason I say that is you don't want to deflect the 260. So that's a bit tight on this particular one. Um, I would say that you could even use a single 260, or you could pre-inflate them and pre-stretch them, and then they're, they're a little longer. So we'll do that for the next one. But you're going to take that other piece, and you're going to do the same thing. It's going to go about on the other side, so it's uh, halfway down. And you can adjust these afterwards if you find that they're not quite right. And you're just going to tie that. Just make tie it around a pair of 350 so it makes uh, a nice grouping, like so. Okay, so you'll do that one more time. This time, I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to pre inflate that 260 and then deflate it. Let's see how that works better. There, so now it's a little longer. I'm going to cut that in two. There. So that's gave me about an extra inch of length. Yes, makeup companies and salons and birthdays. Yes, um, for a deliverable, what I when I make my uh, my pieces, I do use uh, typically odd numbers. So in this case, this piece here column, you can't see all of it. It's just a standard base of round balloons. It's a traditional sort of a classic column. But uh, I use three items in here to group it. So I didn't add four because that's the wrong number. But in this case, I have three. I could have also adjusted it 
so I could have put a 16 on here if it was a sweet 16 birthday, right? That's another way you can uh, you can mark this up to or tailor it to make it more personalized. And if you have a uh, vinyl cutter, you can put a message on part of the uh, foils themselves as well as an option for you to make it a more personalized gift. Hey, oh yeah, that worked way better when you pre-inflate the 260. That's a lot easier to tie. There. I'm going to just hide that. And he should have this pair of loops like so. Hide those knots on the inside. You've got this. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the other side with your other pair of 350s. Okay. Exactly the same thing. As a matter of fact, I think we can just rerun this whole segment and I don't actually have to do it. Well, I'll do it anyway. Squeeze the air out. Wrap it around that other side of the hinge. And you're going to do it again. When I was practicing this and designing it, I kept putting both on the same hinge side. It's really annoying. And I hard to undo because black is hard to see where your knots are. So I'm paying way more attention these days. Squeeze the air out of the tip and just wrap it into that hinge. What I like about this design, it's actually pretty forgiving. Right? It's not very technical, but it's easy to do and it's fast. All right, we're going to take that other 260 now and we're going to inflate and then release it. All right, just to pre-stretch it. All right, and cut that in two. My handy scissors. Well, my poor cat's trapped in the basement with me. Sorry, kitty. I'm working. I don't know. Cats can make you feel so guilty when you, you it's nothing, you didn't, it's not your fault. Especially this one. He's really. I've learned to read his expressions. And he's got the, you know, pay attention to me look going on right now. So, no. All right. There's number two. Or number one. Number two. Fortunately, I had all the supplies I needed uh, before things got difficult to get supplies. So that was handy. But I'm really glad this uh, last foil rose works because it's the only one left I had. So otherwise, it could have been a magenta. I'm going to take my final 260 and I'm going to inflate that. And again, we're going to cut it in half. There we go. And we're going to tie that on just to finish off that third and final tie point. Now, you could use glue to do this. Uh, and there's uh, lots of glue products. And there's a particular glue I like called U-Glue. Jackie was mentioning this, too, on hers, U-Glue strips. OK? You can read that. It's a bit glary here. Let's see if I get a little closer. There we are, by Oasis. There we go. And I love these things because they're super tacky. Um, once they're attached, they don't come off really easily at all. So you have to really commit to your attachment when you make it. But with glue, you run the risk that if uh, one of the balloons shifts or adjusts or starts to deflate or there's some tension on it, it can tear your latex and pop your balloon. So I try not to use uh, glue if I don't have to. Right? With foils, it's different because you know they are more durable on their skin. But with latex, I try and avoid using glue if I can. So that's why we're tying these down. And it actually lasts quite well. And you cannot see these, uh, you can't, or you don't notice the 260s. Uh, oh yeah, I'll show you the little lipstick. As a matter of fact, I have a display I want to show you using the little lipsticks. And I'll talk about how to make them too. I'm going to take these 
hinges, and I'm going to take the three pinch twists. And I'm going to make them all in a row. Okay? So they're going like this. One, two, three. And that causes your, your uh, compact to start making an angle. Okay, I'm going to take one of the balloons. So I'll choose the, oh, uh, the rose. And you don't need to trim off the tip, right? You can just kind of fold it in. It's going to hide in the cracks of the 350, so you don't have to worry about, you know, having it noticed. But uh, make sure that there is the little silvery labely part for the, uh, the designer, the, the manufacturer. I just have that on the bottom so you don't see it. And I know this is off camera. I'm just going to push that foil into the two 350s like so. And I'll show you that in just a second. So I ended up with that. Okay. And it fits pretty nicely just in between. I can use my body just to make it nice and flat. But a flat surface table is the way to go. There. Okay, that's, so actually this is pretty much as hard as it gets for this particular design, so it's pretty simple. We're going to do the same thing for the silver. Okay, I'm looking for where there's any telltale markings. There's the UPC code that's going to go in the bottom. I'm just bending over the, uh, the tab, and it's just going to go right in the front. Because uh, you're not going to see it again, and I'm just going to slide that in. I'm using a table as my base. If you find it's a bit tight, the next time you do it, make your 350s a little smaller or a little longer, and you'll get that extra little bit of slack. But you do want a fair amount of tension, like so. Oops, my uh, rose popped out. Sometimes you got to do this a few times to get it to work just right. But it should all just friction fit in rather nicely, like so. Okay, now what you do is you just arrange to make sure that your three pinch twist hinges are still lined up to be three in the back. Mine kind of floated to the front, so I'm just going to readjust them so they're facing the front, or the back, I should say, like so. Okay, and what you can do is you can take the 350 from the mirror part and you can kind of tuck it in to the inside bend of the lower part here. I'm just going to just show you. Oopsie, now mine popped out again, so I'm just going to put that back in. If you made your 350 just a bit too tight, this can happen to you. Again, you just got to slip her back in. It's a bit finicky, but it's doable. There, and I'm just going to do this on the table. I know you can't see it, sorry for that. But I'm going to just adjust it so those parts are kind of facing in the right way. And my three. Just takes a bit of practice to get this in here right, and a bit of finagling. There we go. There. And you can also maneuver your your uh, two 60s in the back so that way one of them is kind of one on top of the other you can just kind of pull it out kind of rotate it so it's facing forward and that helps create your your fold yeah it's very usable and what you can also do with this oops my again my 260 or my my pink keeps popping out on me it's not behaving very nicely there we go we'll just put that back in again there we go. So I think what happened for me is I had one 350 is just a little more inflated than the other, the way it was set up. So it wasn't quite fitting just right. But again, with a little bit more practice, you can get that to come right for you. There we go. Perfect. And now you have a compact. Now, what's interesting about this one is you do have the hinge points that you can use to attach your anchors to your column or other pieces, your arcs that you want to do it. Okay, 
But that's the compact. It's really very simple. All right. That was the compact. Now let's take a moment and let's talk about sizing of the balloons for different effects. The question that just showed up, how long have I been working with balloons? So I started twisting in 1996, right? And I did it as a hobby and I became my first professional twisting gig was in the year 2000. So uh, ever since then, I've just kept getting more and more experience and more uh, practice and uh, lots more materials. And here's what I do. <laughs> so yeah, a long time. Let's talk about how you can change the size up. Now here's a deliverable I made. To give you an idea, I'm just going to back that away so you can see a little easier. This is exactly the same concept, but I downsized everything. And I used, in this case, 9-inch rounds. And I used for the makeup. And I used 260s for the compact. You see that? And I used 160s for the uh, lipstick. And I used a 350 double stuffed into a 646 to make the lipstick a little thicker. I can show you how to do that too, because that's important to understand. And this is just on a standard, pretty much a standard twisted base with a round balloons on it. Okay, so uh, this is an example of something you can make as a deliverable. That's really quick and e reasonably quick and easy to make, and it's got lots of uh, opportunities to wow folks. If this was for someone's 60th birthday or some other event, you could change out the the uh, nine-inch uh, kissy lips for a different uh, figure, like a 16 or a 6-0. Yeah, there's a picture, for example, of what the entire column would look like. Okay, And I think uh, there's also a shot of that arch in, in the uh, file somewhere, too, under the images. But you can kind of see, oh, there it is right there. And that's an example where I uh, added a few other elements to uh, brush or fill out the arch. But uh, the client really loved it. It was just a perfect solution for them. So I think there's a lot you can do with this particular uh, this particular item here. So thank you. All right, I'm going to put that aside, and I want to show you this um, lip thing because it's a bit tricky, and I'd like you to see that. Uh, I'm going to just show this to you. It's a double stuff technique, and uh, for you that don't do a lot of double stuffing, you need a balloon straw, or I use a knitting needle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the difference between using a 350. This is just a regular 350. It's the same lipstick downsized as this guy. But the difference is you can see one of them is a bit thicker, right? And what I found is the uh, proportions work a little better if the lipstick is just a bit thicker. So I'm just going to show you what that means to me. And you want to take a, in this case, it's a number four knitting needle or a 3.5 millimeter. Well, they come in different sizes. I'm just going to take my 350 of uh, one color. This time you can make other colors too, obviously. I'm going to slide it in, in this case, the same color, Wildberry 646. The trick is, is you pinch on the end so that way both balloons are at the very end of your. Uh, tips. Or you want to grab both tips. And I'm going to try and slide as much of this as I can onto my nozzle. And I'm pulling as I inflate. Right? And this will continue to inflate. And I inflate as far as I can. So that way the tip gets completely inflated. Right? I don't need all of this balloon. But you want to make it so it's nice and even and round at the end. It takes a bit of practice to get this to work just right. But this balloon is thicker than a 350 just inflating it and it'll last. Whoops. <laughs> My 350 broke inside. But it'll last a lot longer for you typically uh, when it is in a, a smaller uh, piece like this one than a 350 would. Okay. Anyway, that just that was worth um, sharing a little bit of time. In regards to making your balloons last longer, um, I typically, when I'm making something that's going to stay up for a long time, I know that uh, I was listening to um, Alberto. Is it Alberto? He uses nitrogen in his 
twisting balloons as well. And he says that makes them last a lot longer. I know some artists use high float, um, and that again, it will really extend the life of your balloons. Well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that uh, comment. Uh, they're getting a good lesson from me, so thanks. Uh, what I personally like to do is I double stuff. Uh, when I'm making something that's going to last a long time, I'm going to double stuff it. And for me, I just like to work with balloons that are double stuffed better than I'm working with high float. And I don't have a lot of nitrogen in tanks. So those are my choices. When you double stuff, I will double stuff a 260 into a 350. And if I'm making a 160, I will double stuff a 260 or 160 into a 260. And that is how I actually made these little guys. They don't, right now, Qualitex doesn't manufacture a 260 chrome. So I'm actually made my own, or pardon me, a 160 chrome. I made my own. And the way I did that is I simply just took, in this case, a black 160 and a chrome 260. And I just did that trick where I showed you. Make sure you pitch and grab both tips before you inflate. Now, uh, this is a great pump, but the, the nozzle is sometimes a little hard to wrap a two, or 160 on, so it just takes a bit of practice. There we go. And when I inflate it, I make sure I pull as I go. And sometimes the nozzle doesn't quite line up, so you got to fiddle with it. But you can see I now have a chrome 160, so that gives you some choices now. All right, and that's how I made that uh, smaller lipstick. All right, how are we doing? I have um, not that much time, so I'm going to see if I can do this one for you pretty quickly. Uh, the atomizer, I don't have the, the amounts posted, but uh, we're going to just, uh, we're just going to head and we're going to make this one here with the uh, latex, okay? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this down, and we're going to start with a 60-inch latex heart, and you want to pre-inflate it. So I'm going to go fairly quickly, but again, this is on uh, repeat, so you can catch it on YouTube. And I'm going to fully inflate it, and I'm going to let the air out, pre-stretch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a raisin, and you make a raisin by simply taking a scrap, and you tie it a bunch of times, right? One, two, we're gonna make an anchor point using this called a raisin twist, the technical name that somebody made up, right? So there I got a little knotted amount of 260. I'm gonna trim the other bits I don't need. I'm gonna try and cram this in, guys, so I'm gonna go a little quick. All right, now I have a little raisin. Dink. And you drop that inside your 16-inch uh, heart. And now what you're going to do is you're going to feel around, and you're going to take that raisin, and you're going to grab it so it's right in the middle of the trough of those two nodes, right, right here. And I'm going to take that raisin, and I'm going to make sure it's right in the center. And I'm going to take it, and I'm going to stretch it out. And now I've got it pinched in my fingers. I'm going to tie, in this case I'll use a pink because I have it handy, or you can use any scrap. And you're going to wrap that around. I'm going to get that close so you can see what I'm doing. And you're going to tie that off. And you're going to secure that raisin. This is a raisin uh, knot. Okay, I'm trying hard not to use my, my, uh, my teeth because you're not supposed to do that with uh, the, the, the way the world is these days. Which is really unfortunate because I use my teeth a lot when I typically work, but I'm retraining myself. It's like the uh, guys who uh, mouth inflate, right? They're going to have to figure out what the new normal is. But when I'm done, I wanted something that looked like this. Okay, so there's a little raisin knot caught with a, a 260. Okay, now I'm going to inflate this heart. I got to be a little careful because it's going to have some stress, so you can't overdo it. Right? But when you're done, you should have this. Okay, And now you've got a nice anchor point. And I'll show you another trick that I learned from trying to save my hands. I went and bought myself some crochet needles. Okay, And what those are, you can see that on screen, 
is they are basically a little tube, and it's got a little tiny hook on the end. I don't think you can see that. Let's see if you can see it against my shirt. Oh, maybe I'll do that. There, she's got a little hook. Anyway, what's cool about these is I use them as an aid to help me tie stuff that's hard to tie. So I'm going to tie this heart the way I normally would, right? But to hook your finger in there and pull it, it's physically difficult. So I'm going to use my little crochet needle. I'm going to hook it in like this. I'm going to pull, use that hook, just pull that out like so, and then just undo it. And it saves me, if I'm doing like hundreds of these guys, man, it saves my fingers a lot of wear and tear. Okay, now we have a heart with a 260 on it. You're going to take uh, silver, in this case, a chrome silver, and I'm going to inflate it about like that. It's about four fingers on the end. Okay? You're going to need a total of four of these chrome silvers. Uh, you're going to need five chrome rounds, um, seven inch, and uh, one 11 inch um, round rows, and a scrap of 260 silver, uh, and uh, the 16 inch heart. I'm going to make about a hands width bubble. So we're going to make this part first. Okay, this, this part here, we're making that now. Awesome. You're going to make two bubbles, like so, the same size. Wrap them together and just lock that knot in, like so. You want these bubbles to be soft, right? So I'm giving it a squeeze as I go. I'm going to make another pair of the same size, nice and soft, that are going to match the two I just made. Perfect. I'm going to roll one of those over top of the other like so. And I kind of let the two twisted uh, centers line up with one another. And you end up with this. Give it a squeeze. Make another set of bubbles. Nice and soft. That's important. And you'll see why in a second. And you should end up with that. Now, I'm going to take this last pair of loops, and I'm just going to roll it over. Oops, mine kind of came undone there. I'm going to roll it over that top part here, like so. And just roll that through so you get a nice six-petal thick flower like this. Awesome. I'm going to push it down. And now you have this little ball. I don't need the rest of this 260. I'm just going to break it, cut it. Here I go. Awesome. All right, I'm doing OK. I still have 17 minutes. I want to force out the petals so they're nice and even. And I have this little ball. Now I'm going to take another silver 260. Sorry, guys, i got to go kind of quick here because I'm running out of time. You're not going to use all of it, so I'll leave probably five fingers, six, tied off. All right. Now I'm going to make um, three, uh, three quarter inch, actually about a one inch bubble. And I'm going to make a second one inch bubble. I'm going to pinch twist the second one. And I'm going to pinch twist the first one. Right, and I want to make a five petal flower on the end. I'll make another bubble and I'm going to pinch twist it. However, you choose to make your five petal flowers, I'm not going to judge. This is how I do it under pressure, on camera, running out of time. But what I want is five. Again, I like that odd number. There. You don't need more than that, to be honest. And you end up with this. Okay? Because you're going to now take your 11 inch round rose, which is the same color as the heart in this case. We could have used lilac or another color, but it's nice, I think, you want them to be the same color. You know, I think so. When I look at the examples on the internet, I think the bulb and the, and the base are the same. And I'm going to inflate this about here, just so it's proportionate to the uh, heart that you're making. Okay? 
That's actually kind of big. I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Well, like so. All right. I'm going to squeeze the air to the end so I keep my circular shape. Tie it. And I have this round bubble that I'm going to now attach to the five petal flower that I just created. All right. And then I'm going to trim off this other bit because I don't need it. And it's just going to get in the way. You could just hide it in the flower petals if you wanted to, but I'm choosing to cut it off. And you just balance it all so it looks pretty. And you have this. All right. So here's the this is the hardest part of the whole thing. You're going to have to shove this guy all the way through this set of flower petals. And the way you do that, or at least the way I do it, you get this out of the way. So I give it a squeeze so I create an opening. You see them? And it also kind of balances everything. And you find the openings that are probably going to be the easiest to use for your insert. There they are. I'm going to take this 260 and I'm just going to slide it through like so. Blink. All right. And that's about well, that's about the right amount of uh, of hose on the end to where the squeeze ball is. And I'm going to make the uh, what is it the the nozzle end of the perfume bottle. That's what I'm going to make. So I'm going to figure out about how long I want that to be. I'm going to add just a little more length, just a little more air. And I'm going to trim this part here. Don't trim it down here. You'll see why in a second. You want to trim it a little higher. You don't need the rest of this balloon. Don't lose this scrap, though. You're going to use it in a second. I'm going to pinch this bubble. I'm going to let the rest of the air out. And then I'm going to relax my hand so it kind of backfills some of that uh, uninflated balloon. Okay. I'm going to tie that off nicely. So now this is a pretty soft little bubble here. Now, I don't need this extra part. I just kept it just so it's easier for my hands to handle. You can also add another little knot there if you wanted to. We're going to make a, uh, a tulip twist, actually, is what it's called. So I just double knotted that just so it's a bit thicker. I'm going to cut that. Now, I'm going to give this bubble a squeeze. I'm going to take my thick finger, I'm going to slide it inside, so I'm pushing the knot inside that, uh, that uh, 260, and I'm going to grab the knot, and I'm going to pull my finger out, like so. I'm going to, now I'm twisting this bubble, so now the knot is on the inside. You can see that the knot is actually right right on the this side of the twist, not down here, but here. When I release it, that will stay in place, like so. Okay. What I'm going to do is take that little bit of scrap that I just cut, assuming I can find it. Oh, there it is. And I am just going to stretch that uninflated part. So now I'm capturing the, the knot inside the, the twist, the, the marriage, or pardon me, the uh, tulip twist. And I'm just going to tie it. And the reason you do that is it keeps the Tulip twist from unraveling accidentally on you, which is really annoying. All right. I'm going to cut off the rest I don't need. So I'm going a bit fast here. And you just can backfill and you can stretch that tulip twist, kind of roll it like this. I'm rolling the knot to the inside. So it's kind of working its way into the center. Oops, you can't see that. It's kind of working its way back into the center. And it kind of lines up more nicely, like so. There. Like that. There. I can fiddle with that a bit more to make it even prettier. But that's kind of where we're at. OK, now what you can do is you can now attach this with your the atomizer top to the perfume bottle bottom. I got a little extra 260 I don't need. I'm just going to trim that off. You have two really good anchor points. You don't need a lot of stress here. This doesn't have to be really super tight. And all I'm going to do is wrap it into this part here. 
I'm just pulling it through the center, giving it a bit of a go, like this. I'm just going to pull that, just so it's nicely in there. Okay, it should be snug, but not super duper snug. Right? You don't want to. You don't want to have constant tension, like too much tension, because it's not. It's uh, a load bearing connection point. So it's just to keep the top part from falling off the bottom. Awesome. And that's enough. You can tie this if you want. But as long as it's twisted in there, it's not going away. And you cut the rest of this 260 off, you don't need. Perfect. And you have this. All right. So we're going to make the feet now. The feet. We're going to make those. And you're going to take yourself some chrome 7 inch. Hey, okay. now these don't need a lot of air. These pumps are really handy for that because you can um, have a consistent number of strokes. One, two. That's lots for this because it's in proportion, right? If it's too much bigger, it would look goofy. Okay, what I do is I squeeze the air down because I want it to remain round. I'm going to wrap that around my pinky finger like so just so I have a way to hold it. Okay, I take the second. Whoops. Long pump. This guy. I'm going to go one, two. So now I have one the same size. Squish the air down. Thank you. And I have two of these that I put together and I pull the air out all the way as much as I can so you get a nice round duplet. All right. I need another duplet doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, thanks guys for watching. I'm I'm glad uh, I'm glad I'm getting some nice comments. I really appreciate that. I haven't taught this before, so I I'm uh, glad that it's working out for you guys. First time seen on cute corner. All right, there's my second duplet. Just tie that off. There we go. Tie those together. Everybody's happy. Thank you, Conrad, the unicorn. <laughs> I think I know who that is. All right. I got a quad. I'm going to attach to this nozzle of my 16 inch. I'm just going to twist that together, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Awesomeness. Like so. And we're just going to basically make a collar around the top and around the bottom to finish this atomizer off. And to do that, you'll use a 260 silver. How'd you tell more jokes? I haven't really told many jokes, to be honest. I've been just trying to get through all my material. I think if I had less material, I could have done more jokes. But uh, So the next time you see me, I'll discover less stuff, but be more funny. I think that's a reasonable trade-off. One inch bubble. We're going to make 10 of them, or another 10. Two, three, four, five. Ah, ah, ah. Don't let go of these because they all unravel, then you get sad. Okay, what do you got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, like that. Now I got to start over. By the way, you know that trick where you can just roll the 260 down your body? And it just helps roll all the rest of those uh, bubbles together. Save you a little bit of time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's good. Okay, what I'm going to do is take this string of pearl, or uh, string of bubbles. There should be ten plus your extra one on the end. That keeps on doing for me for no apparent reason. I'm going to wrap that, in this case, around the base. Okay. You can see that. That should be just enough. If you need one more bubble, that's fine. That's okay. It's no big deal. But that seems to be just about the right amount for me. I'm going to wrap that to where 
That one inch bubble connects with the rest of this 260. And it makes sort of a nice finish for me on the base. Okay, I'm going to take the rest of this 260, make another one inch bubble. Then I don't need the rest of this. I can get rid of it, tie it off. Okay, I'm going to pinch twist both of those bubbles that I just have, one in the nozzle and one on the tip I just cut. And I'm going to hide one of those twists, those bubbles in the back, and it just finishes off the back nicely. So it kind of just blends right in. But again, you want to have a good side and a, and a side that's got the mechanics on it. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the top. Okay, your next 260, here we go. We actually covered a lot of stuff. You guys got your money's worth today. Actually, my my basement's just full of, of various balloons. I, was, I had all these things I wanted to teach, and I realized that there was no way I was going to do it in an hour and a half. So this is kind of what I came up with. Uh, Corey, who commented earlier, and uh, Julianne helped me come up with uh, some of my choices here on what to twist. So thank you, ladies. I'm in your debt. And uh, we thought that these would be a good combination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. And again, you've got this nice round or linking chain that's going to go around. Make sure you start it so you have the good side facing outward. That's going to go around. In this case, I think I can get away with one less bubble. So I just actually only linking the ninth one in. Because I have it seems to look better if I have one less in this case. Okay, so I have this, and again I'm just gonna pop make a final bubble. I'm gonna pop it. The rest I don't need. I'll get that later. Tie it. Pinch twist. There you go. I am kind of cruising here, guys. Thank you for, for listening. Oops, one of my uh, things uninflated, so I'll just get that back. But this is pretty much it. This gives you your atomizer. If you were to do this, how am I doing for time? Doing okay. I've got three minutes left. Woohoo! Three whole minutes. Let's see what I can fill that up with. There. So I've just hidden that uh, mechanics in the back. Good stuff in the front. Ta-da! You've got a balloon atomizer. Now, if you were going to do the foil version, this guy, all I do, uh, thank you. Thank you uh, from Eve. Oh, Evie, thanks. <laughs> How nice. You were going to do the uh, foil version. All you do is simply, before you inflate your heart, is you use uh, masking tape. In this case, I use uh, this stuff, uh, clear masking tape, or packing tape, I'm sorry. It's packing tape. Get the good stuff. Don't get cheap dollar store packing tape. It's not good. It's too thin. And I actually just took a 260, tied a knot, and just taped on one side. And then I split it, cut the two sick or the packing tape so I could go on the other side. And I put a row of tape here, and then another one here, and another one here. Then I inflated this part. And that gives me a really good anchor point for the rest of the figure. And ta da! That's my class. <laughs> I think I got everything. Yep, I think I got everything covered, folks. So, oh, uh, somebody wanted me to show this again. There we go. I'll have to post some pictures and put them up on the uh, on the feed as well. But you wanted to see that little um, lipstick again too, I think was one of the requests. There you go. That's my class. Are there any questions anybody might have in the one and a half minutes we have left? Put this guy here. Oh boy, I got lots more to talk about, but we just ran out of time, folks. We'll have to do this again.
All right. What I'm going to do is, well, I assume I can still talk. So I'm going to keep talking until someone tells me not to. But I want to show you something I learned. I'm going to put this guy down. And I want to show you this cool thing. This is actually a pipe, and it's actually a uh, curtain rod from IKEA from the Urja, uh, I R J E, or I R J A. It's a dollar ninety nine Canadian, and these things are awesome because if you take a block of wood, you just slide that right on there, and this is a three thirteen thirty seconds drill hole, so it's just perfect. Fit in here, it doesn't come out, and it makes a great base for making um, deliverables. So there's an extra little bonus tip for you, um, and it's there. I find it's really cheap to make it this way. There, I think I'm done. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Hello, thank you, Glenn.